people in Egypt, they believed in what's called Kemet, the people that existed before the Egyptians. When we hear these stories about the Great Pyramid being a tomb for the Pharaoh, it's worth mentioning that even the locals didn't believe that. Once upon a time, as the last ice age retreated and the earth began a dramatic transformation, the stage was set for a narrative that would challenge our understanding of human history. This was a time of global climatic shifts, marked by rising temperatures, melting ice and rising sea levels. Human societies, which had thrived as hunter-gatherers during the chill of the Ice Age, began to spread across the planet. This period, known as the Mesolithic Era, saw the dawn of permanent settlements and the beginnings of agriculture. But according to the intriguing and controversial Kemet theory, this era also witnessed the rise of something extraordinary in the Nile Valley. The Great Pyramids and their relationship to the River Nile reflect the sky of 12,500 years ago, not 4,500 years ago. The proponents of the Kemet theory weave a tale of an advanced civilization, one that allegedly emerged amidst these climatic upheavals. This civilization, they claim, was not just advanced for its time, but possessed knowledge and technology that would leave later societies in awe. Their mastery, it is said, extended across various domains. In the realm of astronomy, the people of Kemet supposedly had an intricate understanding of celestial bodies. They could track astronomical events with precision, knowledge that they might have used to develop sophisticated calendar systems and guide their agricultural activities. The Great Pyramid is an incredibly complicated monument, but those who, those who built it had an enormous knowledge. Which they, which they manifested in the Great Pyramid. But their expertise did not end with the stars. The architectural marvels of ancient Egypt, such as the pyramids, are believed by adherents of this theory to be remnants of this earlier, more sophisticated civilization. Further, this mysterious civilization is credited with extraordinary advancements in medicine and mathematics, and perhaps even in fields of energy and physics that modern science has yet to rediscover. The legacy of their knowledge, it is suggested, was far-reaching. The proponents of the Kemet theory point to various pieces of evidence to support their claims. They observe geological anomalies that mainstream archaeology might overlook or interpret differently. For instance, the erosion patterns on the Sphinx and certain features of the pyramids are argued to be much older than the established timeline suggests. The Great Sphinx was subjected to about a thousand years of heavy rainfall and that's the only time you find that heavy rainfall on the Giza Plateau is the Younger Dryas between roughly 12,800 and 11,600 years ago. You certainly didn't find it 4,500 years ago when the Sphinx was supposed to have been made. Proponents cite water erosion marks on the Sphinx, which they claim point to a construction date that predates the aridity of the Sahara Desert. Moreover, the theory draws on mythological and cultural parallels. It notes similarities in ancient myths, religious practices, and architectural styles across different cultures. These similarities are interpreted as echoes of a shared source of ancient wisdom, potentially originating from Kemet. According to the narrative of the Kemet theory, after a catastrophic event, the survivors of this advanced civilization dispersed globally. This diaspora, the story goes, spread their advanced knowledge far and wide. This could, as the theory suggests, explain the sudden rise of complex civilizations and monumental architecture in various parts of the world. In the annals of alternative historical narratives, the Kemet theory stands out as a captivating tale of a civilization steeped in mystery and marvel. This story begins with the assertion that an ancient civilization, referred to as Kemet, once flourished with knowledge and technologies so advanced that they remain incomprehensible even to contemporary science. The echoes of this lost civilization are believed to be found in the monumental achievements of ancient Egypt particularly in the realms of astronomy and engineering. In the realm of engineering, the pyramids, especially the Great Pyramid of Giza, are often presented as the pinnacle of Kemet's architectural prowess. The mystery of the construction of the Great Pyramid, which contrary to archaeological views, has never been solved. Right. Nobody knows how it was done. I mean, you are looking at 6 million tons, 13-acre footprint, 481 feet tall, 2.5 million blocks of stone in its construction. How they do it? Nobody knows. How it was done. The theory marvels at the precision and scale of these constructions. It questions how the ancient Egyptians of later periods, with their known tools and technologies, could achieve such feats. 
the meticulous alignment of the pyramids to true north, the transport and assembly of massive stone blocks and the use of advanced mathematics, including pi and the golden ratio in their design, are all highlighted as indicators of a superior technological capability. Venturing further into the realm of speculation, some proponents of the Kemet theory suggest that this civilization might have harnessed unknown forms of energy or technology. Ideas range from the use of acoustics and vibrations for stone cutting and levitation, to more esoteric notions involving the manipulation of electromagnetic fields or other unseen natural forces. The dawn of the early dynastic period heralded a monumental shift. Egypt, which had been divided into upper and lower regions, was unified under the rule of King Nama, a seminal event immortalized on the famed Nama Palette. This unification gave birth to the first dynasty and set the stage for a cultural renaissance. Hieroglyphic writing emerged, a sophisticated system that allowed for intricate record-keeping and administration. Royal tombs, grand in their design, began to dot the landscape at Abydos and Saqqara. Religious practices grew more elaborate, with gods like Ra and Osiris gaining prominence, and the first pyramids, like Djoser's Step Pyramid designed by Imhotep, began to reach towards the heavens. The Old Kingdom, often hailed as the Age of the Pyramids, saw the construction of these iconic monuments reach its zenith. What happened was that in later times, the ancient Egyptians, who were the inheritors of the culture that originally established the Giza Plateau, that the ancient Egyptians found it necessary to restore and modify some very ancient monuments. The Great Pyramid of Giza, a marvel of engineering and architecture, stood as a testament to the pharaoh's godlike status. Art and culture flourished with the Sphinx of Giza, a colossal statue combining the body of a lion with the head of a pharaoh, embodying the period's artistic audacity. However, this golden age was not to last. Political instability and the decentralization of power eventually ushered in the first intermediate period, a time of decline and turmoil. Out of chaos, the Middle Kingdom arose, a period marked by reunification and stability under rulers like Mentuhotep II. Literature and art saw a renaissance, with works like The Tale of Sinuhe, reflecting a more realistic and individualistic portrayal of life. Trade expanded, and fortifications were strengthened, signaling a kingdom more secure and prosperous than ever. The New Kingdom heralded an era of empire building, with Egypt's influence stretching from modern-day Syria to Sudan. This was the age of famous pharaohs like Hatshepsut, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, and Rameses II. Akhenaten's radical attempt at religious reform, introducing monotheistic worship of Aten, marked a brief but significant departure from traditional beliefs. Architectural achievements reached new heights, with the construction of grand temples at Karnak and Luxor, and the creation of the Valley of the Kings. Following the New Kingdom, Egypt entered a period of decline, the Third Intermediate Period was characterized by political fragmentation, and the Late Period saw foreign invasions and rule by Nubians, Assyrians, and Persians. The final phases of ancient Egyptian civilization were under the Greek Ptolemaic dynasty and Roman rule, marking the end of a civilization that had lasted for... But uh, what they don't like is the notion that, that certain knowledge and information accumulated by that culture was passed down all around the world. Uh, so that you find the same essential ideas in Mesopotamia, right. in ancient Egypt, uh, in the Amazon rainforests, in Mexico, in Guatemala, amongst the Mayan culture, for example, the same essential ideas are being repeated. The traditional Egyptology timeline reveals a civilization of incredible depth and complexity. From their architectural feats to the intricacies of their religious beliefs and social structures, the ancient Egyptians left an indelible mark on human history. Their story, woven into the fabric of the Nile's fertile valleys, continues to captivate and enlighten, a testament to the enduring legacy of one of the world's most remarkable civilizations. In the tapestry of human history, woven with the threads of established facts and intriguing mysteries, the Kemet theory presents a fascinating narrative. Central to this story is the concept of a global cataclysm, linked to the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, which is believed to have had a profound and lasting impact on human civilization, particularly on a sophisticated society known as Kemet. The stage for this narrative is set against the backdrop of the Younger Dryas, 
a period that occurred around 12,800 to 11,500 years ago. This era was marked by a sudden and drastic cooling of the Earth, interrupting the gradual warming that followed the last ice age. The younger Dryas impact hypothesis posits that this climatic anomaly was triggered by a comet or meteor impact, or possibly multiple impacts, around 10,900 BC. The hypothesis suggests that these cosmic collisions led to widespread fires, the creation of a dust cloud that blocked sunlight, and a resultant rapid return to cold conditions. Proponents of this hypothesis point to geological evidence like nanodiamonds and microspherules found in sediment layers as signs of this ancient cosmic event. From the perspective of the Kemet theory, this cataclysmic event is seen as the pivotal factor in the downfall of the advanced Kemet civilization. The theory suggests that the catastrophic events unleashed by the impact led to widespread destruction and loss of life, resulting in the rapid decline and eventual disappearance of Kemet. The envisioned aftermath includes massive fires, dramatic climate changes and ecological disasters that would have been devastating enough to erase much of the civilization's technological and cultural achievements. This was the 12,800 years ago was the onset of the Younger Dryads, which is a, a, a catastrophic climate episode, uh, which is where, where, where the Earth has been emerging quite slowly and almost pleasantly from the Ice Age, and then suddenly goes back into a dramatic deep freeze. In the wake of this disaster, the Kemet theory weaves a tale of survival and transmission. It suggests that the survivors, carrying with them the advanced knowledge of Kemet, dispersed across the globe. These survivors, according to the theory, had a significant influence on the development of other ancient civilizations. This is often cited as the reason for the striking similarities observed in architectural styles, mythological narratives, and astronomical knowledge across various ancient cultures. However, this captivating narrative is not without its challenges and debates. One of the contentious points raised by proponents is the erosion patterns observed on the Sphinx at Giza. They argue that these patterns suggest a much older date of construction, potentially aligning with the timeline of the Kemet civilization. This claim, however, is highly debated among Egyptologists and geologists, with many attributing the erosion to known climatic and environmental factors of a later period. Similarly, questions raised about the conventional understanding of pyramid construction techniques are used to support the theory's claim of more advanced technology. Critics, on the other hand, argue that the methods proposed by mainstream archaeology are plausible and consistent with the available evidence. The theory also draws on mythological and architectural parallels across different ancient cultures, interpreting these similarities as evidence of a shared ancient knowledge base. Mainstream scholars, however, typically view these parallels as examples of convergent cultural development or shared human experiences and archetypes, rather than proof of a single disseminated ancient wisdom. Definitely a hall of records containing uh, a sort of time capsule from a forgotten episode in human history. What is concealed there touches on the fundamental mystery, the mystery of the immortality of the human soul. The concept of the Hall of Records is an intriguing blend of mysticism, archaeology, and speculative history, largely stemming from the visions of Edgar Case and the theories of Graham Hancock. Edgar Case, known as the Sleeping Prophet, was an American clairvoyant who claimed to access a wealth of knowledge in a subconscious state. During his trance-like states, Casey spoke of a hall of records, a repository containing the wisdom and history of a long-lost civilization believed to be Atlantis. This mythical island nation, famously mentioned in Plato's dialogues, was, according to Casey, a hub of advanced technology and spiritual knowledge. Casey had no apology for the limits of his psychic ability, though he continued to make world predictions he never considered himself a prophet. Casey's visions placed one of these halls beneath the Sphinx in Egypt, suggesting it held records from Atlantis, including cosmic knowledge and advanced technologies. He also mentioned two other locations, one underwater near the Bahamas and another in the Yucatan region, linked to the ancient Maya. His description of Atlantis painted it as an advanced civilization, aware of its impending doom, who created these halls to preserve their knowledge for posterity. Enter Graham Hancock, a writer known for his alternative historical narratives. 
Hancock has been deeply interested in the Hall of Records, seeing its potential discovery as supporting evidence for his theories of a prehistoric advanced civilization. I think the key thing is we're, we're looking at technologies that are not the same as ours. Yes. And that's yes, partly that's why archaeologists can't see them, because they're looking for us in the past, and they're not open to the possibility that there are whole other kinds of technology that could be used. He believes this civilization existed during the last Ice Age and was lost to a global cataclysm. For Hancock, the Hall of Records isn't just a mythical concept, but could be a real repository of lost knowledge. He speculates that it might contain detailed astronomical data and advanced technologies that could challenge our understanding of ancient civilizations. Hancock's theories suggest that such a discovery could bridge the gap between myth and historical fact, providing tangible proof of a once globally influential civilization with profound knowledge in astronomy and architecture. We're looking at the clues that lead to specific locations. That shaft which led to that doorway was always a clue. The opening of that shaft was sealed until 1872. The last five inches of stone over the mouth of that shaft had been left deliberately in place. Now moving on, the discovery of the sunken city of Thonis Heracleion off the coast of Egypt has been a remarkable window into the past, unveiling a wealth of information about the ancient world. Located strategically near the canopic mouth of the Nile, north of Abukir Bay, Thonis Heracleion was a pivotal maritime hub. Its position was crucial for navigation and commerce, bridging the Nile River with the vast Mediterranean Sea. The city, with its natural harbour shielded by a chain of islands, thrived as a major port, a testament to its urban and architectural prowess as indicated by the remnants of a network of canals, docks and temple complexes. Rediscovered in the early 2000s, Thonis Heracleion had been submerged and lost for centuries before French underwater archaeologist Frank Godio and his team, employing advanced techniques like sonar scanning, brought it back to light. This monumental discovery, made in collaboration with the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities, ensured that the findings were well documented and preserved. The utilization of cutting-edge technology in underwater archaeology has been pivotal in mapping the city's layout and recovering artifacts, offering us a clearer picture of its past. Dating back to at least the 12th century BC, Thonis Heracleion was more than just a city. It was a bustling hub during its heyday in the late Pharaonic and early Greco-Roman periods. As a significant commercial center, it played an integral role in the Mediterranean trade network, dealing in goods like grain, papyrus, precious metals and spices. But its significance wasn't limited to trade alone. The city was a cultural melting pot, blending Egyptian, Greek and Roman cultures. This amalgamation was reflected in the diverse range of artifacts unearthed, including statues and inscriptions, showcasing various artistic styles and cultural influences. The city's religious significance cannot be overstated. With its large temples and sanctuaries dedicated to numerous Egyptian gods and goddesses, Thonis Heracleion was a spiritual beacon, especially known for hosting the annual Mysteries of Osiris rituals. Politically, too, it was a powerhouse, serving as a primary entry point for foreign diplomats and traders to Egypt, and playing a crucial role in international relations. Its administrative significance was also marked, given its role in tax collection and governance. The Society for American Archaeologists claimed that they could absolutely for certain be sure that there was no lost civilization during the Ice Age. They knew it was a fact, and if there had been any civilization, they would have found it, right. and they would have published it. The archaeological treasures unearthed from the sunken city of Thonis Heracleion have been absolutely incredible each offering a unique glimpse into the life and times of this ancient Egyptian city. For starters, the discovery of over 64 ancient shipwrecks is remarkable. It's not just the number that's impressive, but also their state of preservation. These wrecks are like time capsules, giving us a real sense of the maritime activities that once buzzed in this port. They tell us about the shipbuilding techniques of the era, how these vessels were designed, constructed, and the materials used. The diversity of ships, from grand cargo vessels to smaller boats, paints a picture of a bustling harbour engaged in a wide range of maritime endeavours, and the cargo remnants, including amphorae and various trade goods, speak volumes about Thonis Heracleion's extensive trade network. Then, there are the anchors, about 700 of them. This is unheard of in underwater archaeology and speaks to the sheer scale of the port's operations. 
The size and design of some of these anchors suggest they were used by large, heavy ships, showcasing the port's capacity and technological prowess at the time. The materials used, stone, metal, reflect not just the resources available but also the level of craftsmanship and maritime technology of the period. The statues they found are simply awe-inspiring. Imagine coming face to face with a 16-foot tall statue underwater. These statues, representing gods, goddesses, pharaohs and perhaps significant city figures, give us a window into the religious and political life of Thonis Heracleon. Made from granite and diorite, they're not just huge, they're also beautifully crafted, a testament to the city's wealth and its cultural significance. Gold coins are another major find. The substantial quantity of coins discovered indicates the city's economic prosperity. These coins span across various eras and rulers, providing a timeline of the city's prominence and its connections in trade. They're solid proof of Thonis Heracleon's active role in regional and international trade networks. There are, you have to be careful when you look at underwater structures. You have to look at all the conditions that have led to their submergence. And, and in some cases, it's very clear that they've been underwater for a very, very, very long time indeed. Thonis Heracleon is like a treasure trove for anyone fascinated by ancient civilizations. The way this city was laid out tells us so much about the people who lived there and their advanced understanding of urban planning. They had a network of canals, roads and buildings, all systematically arranged, which is pretty impressive when you think about how old this city is. These canals were crucial for transport and trade, functioning like water-based roadways. It's amazing to imagine boats navigating these waterways as part of daily life in the city. Then there's the city's architecture, particularly its temples. Thonis Heracleon wasn't just a trading hub, it was a religious center too. The temples there were dedicated to various deities like Amun and Heracles, showcasing the religious diversity of the time. These weren't just simple structures, they were architecturally grand with large columns, statues and intricate carvings. It's fascinating to think about how these temples were not only places of worship, but also centers for social and cultural activities. They played a significant role in the daily life of the city. The city's role as a cultural hub is further highlighted by the artifacts found there, which show a blend of Egyptian, Greek and Roman influences. I think we're looking at something from Alexandria here. Yes. Yeah, we are. We are. I've dived there as well. That's inundated not because of sea level rise, but because of subsidence of the Nile silts. Uh, Moving on to more underwater locations in Egypt, Cleopatra's palace in Alexandria is truly a fascinating subject, especially when you dive into its location, historical context, and the treasures it held. Nestled in the eastern harbor of Alexandria, the palace was not just any royal residence. It was located in the most prestigious part of the city, known as the Royal Quarter. This was where the heart of political and cultural activity in the Ptolemaic period beat the strongest. Now think about Cleopatra Sevevan, the figure to whom this palace belonged. She was the last pharaoh of the Ptolemaic kingdom, renowned for her intelligence, charisma and her liaisons with figures like Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. The palace, from its architecture to its contents, was a reflection of her power and prestige. Imagine a grand structure combining traditional Egyptian and Hellenistic architectural elements with lavish decorations and intricate detailing. It wasn't just a place to live, it was a statement of power and culture. The palace was probably filled with lush gardens and courtyards, offering a peaceful retreat in the midst of a bustling city. And given Alexandria's reputation as a center of learning and scholarship, it wouldn't be surprising if Cleopatra's palace housed extensive libraries and study areas. This would have been a place where the intellectual elite of the period gathered. The grand reception halls in the palace would have been venues for diplomatic events and political discussions, playing a crucial role in the international politics of the era. The artifacts and architectural elements discovered from this palace are like pieces of a historical puzzle. Statues, possibly depicting Cleopatra, Ptolemaic rulers and Egyptian gods, made from materials like granite and basalt, give us a glimpse into the artistic excellence of the time. The columns and other architectural fragments found at the site tell a story of opulence and artistic fusion, where Greek and Roman influences blended with Egyptian motifs. And then there are the sphinxes, symbolizing royal power and religious significance, perfectly illustrating the cultural synthesis that was characteristic of the Ptolemaic period. These discoveries are not just about Cleopatra's personal tastes. They provide a deeper understanding of the Ptolemaic society during her reign. 
the blend of Egyptian, Greek, and Roman elements found in the palace's architecture and artifacts reflects the rich cultural diversity and exchange that occurred under Cleopatra's rule.